is. So today, for those of you who don't follow my Instagram or Facebook pages, we'll be making a sheath for this Bowie knife that I made. Hey Rich! Yep, gotta make a sheath for this Bowie knife. Drop point Bowie. People insist on putting fingers on blades. Hey Ben! As a maker, if I could ask of my subscribers, if you view a custom knife maker's work, and you have the opportunity to pick the knife up. Can you please, please, not put your fingers on the sides of the blade? I don't know why people insist on putting their fingers on the sides of a blade. Testing the edge, totally understand. You know, even, you know, looking at the, looking at the sides, sure. But why, oh why, do people feel the need to place their fingers on the sides of a knife? There is no purpose to it. And it is literally my biggest pet hate. Hey Daniel. I don't think I can stress enough how much I hate people who put fingers on sides of blades. Seriously, there is no fucking reason for it. Don't do it. <laughs> so I've done, you know, a couple of knife shows now. Morning, Bob. Yes, licking them is bad, Ben. I've done a couple of knife shows now, and literally everyone that came to my table... I'll grab a non-finished blade to demonstrate. This is a sax that I forged in a video. But they'll pick up the knife by the handle. Cool. They'll look at the blade. Cool. They might put their fingers on the spine and test the edge. Okay. But then they'll do this. They'll, they'll, they'll run their fingers down the sides of the knife, or they'll grab the knife, and they'll look at it that way. Why? Why? What purpose does it serve? This doesn't tell you anything. Oh, uh, it's, it's not in particular, Bob. I think when I showed it to Mick yesterday, he might have done it. Um, it's more of a... This is, this is something I've been meaning to talk about for a while because it is something that gets on my nerves no end because hey, it's so Sorry Mick Hey Ryan Fraley, how you doing? Bad Mike? <laughs> Yeah, no, so, um, but the, the, the thing is, is that it, it's so many people, like, ev literally everyone who picked up a knife at the knife shows when I was doing demonstrations, like, when I had blades, would do that. They would pick up the knife and run their fingers down the sides of the knife, and it just, oh, makes me want to murder someone. 
Why? <laughs> it's just, I don't mind if you pick up my knives. I don't, I will hand them to you. But, um, but yeah, why, why would you go to a knife show with a perfectly finished knife? Like this, this has got some rust spots in it and stuff now because this has been quite well used. Um, but why, why do you do this? Why do you feel the need? Okay. Hey, Lalk, you're not late, you're early. Hey, Adam, the butcher, how you doing? Yeah, gotta to touch the shiny stuff. I wish people frickin' wouldn't. <laughs> this coming from the guy carrying the big knife. Don't, don't do, don't do the bad thing, otherwise the guy with the big knife gets angry. Okay, rant over. Don't touch the sides of a knife. And if you're going to display a knife at a knife show, this isn't a, this isn't part of the rant. Um, but this is a suggestion for anyone who might be selling knives at a show or anything like that. I guarantee it will happen. So take oil, rag, and gloves. Every show I go to, I take a box, or I take a few um, vinyl gloves or um, nitrile gloves. I take either a spray bottle of um, WD-40 or a squirt bottle of 3-in-1 uh, or one of the little dropper bottles of a 3-in-1 and a uh, soft cloth. Because people will pick them up and they'll put their fingerprints all over it and anyone who uses guns, anyone who works with steel... Um, yeah, Daniel, the, the thing is, at the end of the day, even gun oil doesn't protect uh, steel from fingerprints. Um, if you get someone pick your knife up, when um, you know if they if they if you pick if they pick your knife up and put their fingers on it, the oils in their fingers will creep under that that um, gun oil and it'll start rusting the blade. It'll start pitting it because there are acids in human skin, which is why you're not supposed to pick up frogs without wetting your hands first, um, because there are acids in your skin that will literally start eating at the blade. Um, and like, you know, for, for a couple hours, it's not going to make a difference, but if you're at a show for two days, uh, and you let them sit on the table with fingerprints all over them, they will probably start to pepper spot, which is little rust spots. The other thing, of course, is that you might end up with, um, uh, you might end up with just a smudged blade and that doesn't look very good for potential customers. So... Yeah, you want to, you want to make sure that you have the ability to oil it, whether you use Remington oil or three in one or whatever you use, whatever kind of protective oil you're using, um, you want to take some oil and some gloves and some soft cloth or like even like paper towel or something just to clean your blade off because it makes it look a lot better. You know, once you've cleaned it off, that nice shiny finish that you spent 12 hours hand sanding on to get that perfect hand satin, 1200 grit hand satin on both sides of the blade, get that really nice shine. You spent so many countless hours hunched over the bench trying to get that nice finish and someone's putting their grubby little bloody mitts all over it. The last thing you want to do is have that finish be ruined. <laughs> all good, Rob. Hi, Matt. I'm not sure if I said hi, but... Um, hey, hey, Lauk. Um, Lauk, I started forging um, when I was 22. 22? Six years ago. Whenever... Was it 26? Was it six years ago or seven years ago? I think it might be seven years now. Now you got me thinking. Yeah, seven. I was 21. I was 21 and a half when I started forging. So, uh, yeah, seven years ago. All right. Enough of me ranting about stupid people. Hey, Jared, my leg is screwed. I'm 97. Yeah, right, okay. No, I am 28. 28. feel like I'm a lot older. That 
It's mainly because I keep breaking myself. It's a really bad habit of mine. Sharp enough to sharpen a pencil? Probably. <laughs> yeah, just a little baby. That's me. I'm self-taught, Matt. Uh, yes, I was actually um, was actually able to save a lot of the footage. So uh, happy days on that one. Oh man. Why is everything covered in frickin' shoe polish? Good God. My workshop is a travesty. It's actually not that bad. Andy came in here yesterday and had to clean, out, clean it up, but uh, unfortunately my leatherworking supplies, it's not actually shoe polish, it's, uh, shoe, it's leather dye. Um, the, my bottle, God damn it. My bottle of raven oil bu burst in my leatherworking kit and covered everything in this thick layer of raven oil, which then hardened, but when raven oil hardens, it hardens like shoe polish. So it just coats everything in this really nasty black stuff that rubs off and everything. All right, thanks. Thanks, Lauk. Yeah, crisis averted, Jared, that's it. Unfortunately, it means uh, I haven't been able to film the rest of the video, so it'll be a couple of weeks before it'll, uh, be it'll be a couple of days before it comes out. I'm hoping I can get something out for next Wednesday. The big project's been put on hold, given that I had a very close to mental breakdown. Um. Hey, I'm as you going. Um, so it's not it's not super important to sell sheaths with knives. There are a lot of knife makers who don't. They just refuse to, to make sheaths. Um, and that's totally viable. If you don't know how to leather work, um, then don't. Um, I actually partnered with a friend of mine for a while. Uh, he was an avid leather worker, but he had no idea on how to work steel. So he would, you know, he would send people to me for, you know, if they said, oh, where can I get a knife? That he'd send them to me and then if I made a knife and they wanted a sheath with it, I would send them to him and he would do the knife work for me, uh, the sheath work for me. So we kind of had a, a business going that way and that's a really good way to do it. If you know a good leather worker, um, then you can always use them to get your, uh, your sheath work done. There's no shame in it. And most of the time I don't, I don't actually do sheath work for most of the knives I sell. I offer, I offer sheaths with my, with my knives. I often offer that to my customers purely because I'm, in, I'm interested in that kind of thing. Um, and I can do the leather work if I want to. Um, and I have done leather work in the past. But, um, it's not necessary. Alright, I'm going to cut this. Because holding on to this big roll of is unnecessary. My tip's not very sharp. How dare it. Just tear it up. Uh, quick knife maker's tip. This is, um craft paper you can buy it from like your uh like target kmart big w that kind of stuff these are um they're, they're sold as butcher like they call butcher paper but uh yeah they're just giant rolls of craft paper and you buy them you know you can buy several meters of it for uh like five bucks 
and it gives you a really good uh, really good roll of stuff and it's, it's great if you're gonna work big knives because you can obviously roll it out and you know do whatever length you want I originally got it so that I could design uh, sheaths and swords and stuff like that so Hey, Donut. Hey, Corey. Yeah, it's always a, a struggle, Jared. It's going okay down here. That'd be awesome, Jared. I've always wanted to make uh, some spotted deer hide sheaths. One day, one day. So what I do with my sheath work, at the moment I'm just laying out my knife. I draw straight edges. Do. All right, sweet. Okay, so I'll try and show you what I'm up to as I go. I have traced out the knife and the front of the guard. That's very important because uh, this, um, what I'm going to be doing is a paddle sheath. Um, <clears throat> what's called a paddle sheath uh, or a, a, a flat sheath, uh, which is going to be stacked layers. And then I'm going to make a frog for it to sit in. Um, and I'll show you what a frog is, hopefully in this stream. Maybe not. Who knows? I don't know how long this stream is going to go for. This is basically all I'm going to be doing all day, so this could be a relatively long stream. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so uh, the flat body sheath doesn't actually have any way to attach itself to a belt on the sheath itself. It hasn't got an in, uh, like a, a, an integral uh, belt loop, like some sheaths. And the reason that you want to trace the front of your guard is because that's where your sheath is going to meet up. And if you have a flat sheath, it's really easy because you just have a, a flat sheath. Um, for instance, on my big bowie knife, the, the guard is flat, so the, the guard just meets up to the sheath. Now, I made a cardinal sin, a cardinal area, error of leatherworking when I made this, in that I equally traced the edge of my knife, but... I didn't take reference to the guard. Now, the reason I didn't do that is because normally I make single guard knives. Uh, normally what you want is the guard to either match up to the sheath the whole way around, or you want the uh, sheath to overlay the guard on both sides, or come in under the guard so that the guard comes outside the sheath. But because the blade is quite wide, uh, what I should have done is made this welt wider to match that guard so that I had a bit more of a matched thing because I really don't like that step from the guard. But that's just an aesthetic thing. Yeah, now I have my outline of my blade. I don't, don't need to touch the blade anymore, which is good. Uh, the less you touch the blade, the better. But now I need to work out how large my sheath is going to be. Now, because I have a very curving top guard, um, I'm going to have to follow that line out here. So that's going to be my welt line there. With this, I'm going to let that curved guard overlap the uh, overlay the um, the sheath on this side because I want to have that sheath. Uh, in about here. Um, so basically I'm going to take that measurement from the spine to the tip, the underneath tip of the uh, rear guard, and I'm going to follow that measurement all the way around the blade, following this straight line where the ricasso goes, because obviously if I had the sheath cut into that ricasso, then you'd end up with a blade that wasn't being able to remove from the sheath. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll finish that line up here. That's going to become a thing with you guys, isn't it? <laughs> Fair enough, Jared.
Yeah, I mean, the, so, hey, Billy, it's, it's definitely morning. <laughs> Good evening to you, though. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this, in this instance, I'm going to have a separate chief, which is what I plan to do with the big chief, uh, actually, fun enough. This was, uh, this was supposed to be a frog sheath as well, uh, in that that was supposed to be the overall design and that belt loop wasn't supposed to be there. And then I was going to have a, um, a frog, uh, post there. And then the frog is a, a piece that cups over that and then has the belt loop attached. But, uh, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there in the end. So, paddle sheath. Alright, let's talk more work. Yes, less yak yak. More measure stuff out and draw it. That totally doesn't rhyme. Anyway, so what do we got? Uh, actually going to be very careful and I'm going to measure the actual width of the blade gap. We'll call that 15 mil. Let's see how accurate my drawing is. It's actually pretty accurate. That's good. I like that. Trick is, it's not bad to have it a little oversized. It's very bad to have it a little undersized. So what I'm going to do is just quickly run around the perimeter, making 15 millimeter marks. Hey, Mick. <laughs> and this gives me a line I can draw to uh, without having to worry about tracing it and then not getting the job done right. Uh, if you do the sheath before you make the handle, uh, you can do that if you know that it's going to be flat or something like that. Um, you can get it laid flat and actually just push the blade over and trace the blade uh, again to give you that perfect um, that perfect contour but I'm not doing that because reasons it's not so much because of reasons it's because I don't want to Now the advantage of doing a paddle sheath, unlike a, uh, say a folded sheath, is that I can basically make this all without having to test fit it to the blade, which is advantageous. So I know that's flat along there. So I can draw a line on the front of the guard where it meets the Ricasso. I know that's flat, so you don't have to worry about that. And now I'm just going to quickly join the dots. Now I've met a lot of leather workers. I've talked to a lot of leather workers and every single one of them has a different idea on what is and is not a good way to make a sheath. It's much like meeting knife makers. You can ask a dozen knife makers how to make a knife and they'll all give you a different answer. Fifteen millimeters, Daniel, come on. Oh, don't break yourself, donut. Whatever you do, don't break yourself. Okay, I like I'm liking where this is looking. It's not gonna be a very complicated sheath, but that's okay. So, 
<clears throat> now we've got ah, drop things. Ah, okay. So I matched that 15 millimeter measurement around the entire blade, and that gives us our sheath profile. So that's going to be our pre profile for our uh, our sheath. So uh, now all I have to do is cut that out, and uh, I've got my template to cut onto leather. For which I apparently need to sharpen my uh, apparently need to sharpen my little marking knife because it's uh, blunt as boogery. Don't you dare! Not a big fan of berry blades. And this is only a rough guide. I want it to be a slightly oversized because then I can actually cut two my lines later. <clears throat> See if I can move the camera and get it to uh, screw up a little bit. <sighs> that Wi Fi repeater does bugger all. Sorry, guys, you're gonna have to deal with shaky cam for a second while I get this all set up. See my face more. Repeater's, uh, repeater's crapping out on me, I think. Alright, so, as you can see, we have, a... God damn it. We have our uh, template, which is slightly oversized. Uh, I think I lost the template. No, no, it didn't hit the... This is just a coarse carborundum stone. Doesn't have to be anything. Special. This is the stone I keep for rough sharpening things that are probably not going to stay sharp for long. Oh man, dropping everything today. No means the best way to run things, but it's the uh, most expedient. There we go. Should do it. Put it down somewhere where it's not going to roll away. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so now I need to get my leather. Be back in a minute. Pepsi Max.
Yeah, that's my that's my giant coil spring chair. Hey, Curtis. Uh, running a hard line is going to be a lot of pro a lot of bad <laughs> fun. Hey, Paul. I'm actually going to be doing a video on that uh, on that little spring. <laughs> little spring. So, well, when it comes to leather selection, I could obviously choose which is a uh, veg tan hide, which was purchased on me by one of my Patreons. <clears throat> but I want something a little bit more rigid, and I have this uh, four millimeter half hide or four millimeter veg tan that I think is going to suit my purpose. All the better. If worst comes to worst, I can um, use the thinner veg tan as now, uh, and I'll use this thicker stuff as the wet, and because uh, that's going to be the the roughest wear stuff. And obviously, when you're using leather, you want to make use of as you possibly can. <clears throat> Wasted bag. Please remember, if you're a right-handed person and you want people to hang the right side on your right side with the handle, you know, with the blade facing backwards, you don't want to put the side out. You want to put the, uh, the buff side out. Uh, and I made that on a couple of blades, which it ended up being a left handed sheet, not a right handed sheet, and that made it really annoying. So don't do that. I say, not as I do, kids. I actually have in here a white. Again, going outside your lines is going to be better than going inside your lines. <clears throat> and that's going to mean that... Nope, that's backwards. Oh, man. I don't know what it is about my internet that's so bad. I'm going to have to hardline out to this freaking workshop. It's going to kill me. <clears throat> okay, so I just managed to do exactly what I told you not to do and draw it on backwards. Um, because I'm a freaking moron. That's okay. Some 800 grit. And this is why we draw it on the buff side, because you can sand it off. If you do that to the uh, good side, you're screwed. Okay. Take two. As minimal wastage as we possibly can. Whilst getting everything on the board. Now it's the right way around, we can get it out.
this bit requires a bit of focus, so sorry if I'm not as talkative. I'm sure if Randy was watching, he would be uh, screaming at the screen right now, telling me to use the proper tools. Uh, actually, M4 works really well for, uh, for knives, funnily enough. HSS. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, Rich. We're still going to get dropouts, but not as much. Um, yeah, actually, I've made a number of knives out of M4 tool steel, um, which is high-speed high steel, uh, as they call it. Um, Oh, cheers, Donut! Thanks for dropping in, buddy. It can be a tricky thing to forge, high-speed steel, uh, but it does make a, a fantastic knife. Funnily enough, it's one of the only steels that I have worked with that I regularly water quench because it gets better results. If I had Parks 50 or something, I'd imagine I would get better results again. But uh, I don't have Parks 50, so water it is. Now, if I had French curves, I would be able to use the French curves to. Uh, Finish that up, but I don't have fresh coats, so. <clears throat> but we can always true up this on the grinder. The important thing is to have all the sections cut out ready for when we get to that stage. One of the wonderful things about doing this is that you basically have your welt ready-made. All you have to do is measure your width minus about a millimeter because you want a bit of clearance. Add a couple of points on the uh, on the piece that you literally just cut and you can cut your welt directly from the same piece of leather. All you do is line your template, or in this case, maybe your tape paper template, whichever makes you the most comfortable to use. Line it up with the spots on the, on the leather and trace. And that will give you your welt. And it's already got the inside curve that you need. You have to cut it a bit over length because it's uh, obviously longer than the, the original piece.
But having done that, you now have your welt. No, no, never mind. I'm going to do that back piece on all one. One bit. Morning, mate. Well, mate. Morning, pick dish. Get a coffee. I'm good, man. Good. I'm good. Too fucking warm for a coffee now. Monkey. Yeah, it's freaking humid. It's bloody humid. It is. Give her a bit of a strop. It helps to regularly strop your uh, your woodworking tools. Sing out if I miss a comment. Cheers, mate. Yeah, 52100 is great. Loves me some 52100. I have it in all kinds of sizes. And shapes. I have everything from 3mm sheet to a 4 pound roller to uh, a rather large inner bearing race. Suffice it to say, I have all of the 52100 I could ever want, for now at least. Some of it will be featured in upcoming videos. have plans for a Dane axe, which is a battle axe. It's the battle axe, technically. Right, so there's your front welt. You could cut the welt all as one piece. I don't like to, mainly because I like to hear live, uh, leave a small drainage gap at the base. Uh, the Dane Axe has a, a really long swept out blade, so it's got a high point and a high beard and a low beard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but it's not huge. Yeah. It's only, you know, yeah, big. Because you don't want it to be super heavy. It's also very, very thin. Oh yeah, it has quite a, quite a pronounced beard. Yeah, it's kind of a bugle shape. So it kind of does that. Can be used for both poking and hooking. Oh yeah, the, the Turkish satellites. That was good. That was a good build, that one. Just true up my profile. Right, so now I have my welt. So as I said, I'm gonna have the welt sit like that, and it will have a gap in it for. Drainage, because that's important. I actually have to cut it a bit shorter. There you go. I went a bit overboard, I think. Yeah, because the last thing you want is water building up in your sheath. I just, uh, That'll ruin your day. Two 
two pieces of the maximum that I would make, uh, uh, maximum welt parts I would make. Just tracing out my blade outline so that I get an idea of where I want my welt. See if I can overlay this to make the other half of the welt. I can. Look at that. And then all I have to do is flip it over. Ah, make you dare. Make sure I keep it in alignment would be good. And now I just trace that out. Now this is one case where you definitely want to cut outside your lines. Because you can always trim off excess from outside the welt later. Follow my own advice. I will probably be spending most of the day sheath making, so. Hey, get going, Mad. Hey, going. Uh, Billy, um, the my email is sandtownsbladesmith at gmail.com. Feel free to send me a message. I will happily review anything you send me. Right, so <clears throat> those are the three main body parts of the sheath. And now we just need the top layer, which either I'll have an offcut that I can use, or I'll use a cut from that large piece. Having a, a box of offcuts is great. I regularly go to leather stores and like saddlery places and just ask them to dive through their scrap bins and normally they sell me by the kilo or the, by the pound. Um, and they, you normally get it for ridiculously cheap prices. And sometimes you get really nice pieces of really hard saddle leather. Um, other times you get more like upholstery grade leather. This is actually an offcut from my apron. Um, you get, you know, shoe leather, which is quite tough. Um, I, I'm not particularly worried about the shininess. I'll find a use for it. But yeah, you get, you, you get all kinds of fun stuff. I don't think I've got anything from memory, and I don't want to use colored because I'm going to end up using a dye on this. So, no, I'm going to, I'll use the uh, three quarter. Hide, or the half hide. Better. That's cool. 
I remember watching Dirty Jobs back in the day. It's a good show. Right. So now we've got our two pieces. Now I need to cut another overlay. I'm just going to quickly mark and cut the welts end for my sheath. You need them to meet up because otherwise uh, you end up with too much of a gap and the tip will poke through and that's not a good thing. I actually had that on one of my one of my earlier sheaths and I stabbed myself in the leg. It's definitely not a good idea. So you should be able to get the idea now. We've got our edge welt and our spine welt. Turn towards me so you can see. They meet up like that. And then our blade will sit in there like that. Obviously it's not sitting all the way in because I haven't cut the uh, shoulders for the guard, but you can see that it's about the same shape as my blade, which is what I want. And then we're going to glue it all together. Uh, trim it all up. And then split it, punch it, sew it. But first, more leather work. By that I mean more working with leather. Now, I've got to remember that that is the outside. <laughs> I love this half hide. This stuff is freaking amazing. But it's a little painful to deal with. I'm always working in the interest of trying to per preserve as much of the hide as I can. So I'm going to remove the mark of this one. That's okay. That's the outside. Yeah, that's the outside. So let's not remove the outside. On this lighter hide, the uh, the dark pencil actually shows up better. And I just realized I should have marked the buff side, or the, uh, the smooth side of my rear panel. It's going to want this pencil. Oh, bollocks. I think I just lent on that board too hard and I just broke the support. <laughs> I did too. I pulled the nails out and everything. If anyone's wondering what my rest was, it's this uh, kitchen board with uh, two nails in it. I just broke the support. Yeah. I know. I'm terrible. It was like the best idea I had. Like... Yeah, I know. It can be fixed. Oh. So it's just turned into a woodworking show for a second while I fix my leather cutting bench. I don't think nails was the best idea anyway, but I didn't have any screws. <laughs> sure you're not. Yeah, sure sure you're not, Daniel. I totally believe you, dude. This is 100% sincerity in my voice. You can tell.
Hmm. See, this is the problem. I'm not a woodworker, so I don't have screws. I have shitloads of nails, though. I'm actually wondering if just punching the nails all the way through the top and clinching them wouldn't be a bad idea. It's going to mean there are nails on my board, but I don't think at this stage that it matters. But... Oh, that's bent as hell. Uh... Really? Come on. <laughs> if anyone's wondering why I'm having such a hard time, that, uh, that hammer is mild steel, and the face has been so deformed that it's not exactly straight. And the heads of these nails are, uh, round. <laughs> like, domed. They're domed, polished nail heads. This is... Well, yeah, I mean, this is true, but I'm stubborn. the other one out too. Oh, that didn't work. Welcome to the Sam's Not a Woodworker show. With Sam, the Not a Woodworker. <laughs> Alex the Carpenter is going to be sitting there going, No! What are you doing? You absolute cretin! Oh uh, well. Sometimes the expedient method doesn't always work. Time to become the white ninja again. Alright, that didn't work. Hmm. That's a shame, because I just ruined that offcut which I was using to clamp. part of the, the old tool handle that I used to originally clamp it. <coughs> My magic comments are full of lots of laughing crying faces. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sweating up a storm you guys. It is stupidly humid today. Yeah, okay, but... But, it's not really comfortable. Well, you, you can get that because that is the last, or almost the last, of the Black Rifle Coffee. That is, that is it. We're almost done. Wow. <laughs> we kind of powered through the last couple bags. Yeah, especially after I moved in. <laughs> Once you moved in, it started, it kind of, uh... It kind of put pay into uh, my my black rifle coffee addiction. How not to glue something down? Use way too much glue, and then hammer nails through it. <laughs> so watch me get sprayed with glue right now, and I'm going to still use the worst hammer in my workshop.
somehow that worked. I don't know how. And yes, I know they've driven through the other side of the board. That's kind of the idea. I don't know how I managed to get that in. That was falling over the whole way down. But it, I managed to get it all the way down. That was, uh, that was spectacular. Now this glue isn't going to dry, I don't I know that. <laughs> I grabbed four nails, but I only needed two. Cool. Content! Yay! <laughs> now back to it. <laughs> Back to our regularly broadcast schedule. Our regularly scheduled broadcast. Regularly scheduled broadcast, that's correct. <laughs> and now I'm just going to clinch these over. this with something. Right. Yes, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> right, get on with it. Yeah, get on with it. Right. <laughs> okay, so, so delicious. <laughs> what do you reckon the best black rock that we have? Ah, uh, the Beyond Black, man. Why? Yeah. Like, the, the, for flavor, Beyond Black was my favorite, guaranteed, hands down. The others were good, but the on, Beyond Black was just the shiz. So I'm going to put up a poll this afternoon, I think, or later on this week, uh, about whether or not I should start live streaming again uh, in the lead up to Perth Night Show, because Perth Night Show is coming. Um, it is coming quickly. It's still in February of next year, but that's uh, not as far away as it sounds. So I'm about to start getting ready, and it means that I'm not going to have the time to be filming lots of YouTube content because I can't afford to be setting up the camera and knocking down the camera and setting up the camera and knocking down the camera. So would you guys be interested in me going back to my roots and doing the, uh, doing the live stream thingamajig again? I need to make a new one. <laughs> but yeah, that's just a proof temp of concept. Temporary proof of concept. Yeah. Night Curtis. <laughs> Fair enough, Ben. Yeah, the the, ca the carpenter's hammer here isn't actually a carpenter hammer. A uh, carpenter's hammer.
<laughs> uh, this one, this specific carpenter's hammer. I have so many carpenter's hammers that I uh, customized one uh, for my wife who was making spoons, and she couldn't swing my ball peen hammer because my ball peen hammer was a two and a half pound ball peen hammer. So I made a, uh, a mirror polished ball peen carpenter's hammer, <laughs> and I use it for peening rivets now, uh, peening pins and stuff. If you watched my um, the straight razor video, which I uploaded recently, I used this to paint the uh, brass rivets. Right. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Get on with it. <laughs> there ain't no better. All right. So, we have our two halves of our sheath. We have the back, we have the front. Now, the back needs a treatment before we can move ahead. We've got some 180 grit here. <laughs> Watch woods cruise. Uh, anyway, um, because I'm gluing the rough side of one piece of leather to the polished side, or the, the skin side, in this case, because it's full leather, um, I need to rough up the skin side to give it, uh, give the glue something to grip to. And I'm hoping I actually have uh, contacts in it because that would be really awkward if I don't. I didn't check. <laughs> oh, this could be a very short stream. There is there is ways to get around it, but I like to use the glue method. So if there are, if I don't have it, then I'm gonna. Shit, Mate, after the week I've had, giving up and crying is a legitimate option. You know I, what's that? We're only halfway through it. Yeah, I know, it's only 45 minutes in, it feels like it's been longer. No, it's a week. Oh, the week. Well, yeah, that's that's true. That's it. Feels like it's been longer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a price. It does. It actually does. Yeah. Well, I mean, Christ, you were asking me whether I was podcasting tonight, yesterday, and I was like, <laughs> No, you asked me on Monday. I was like, Dude, it's a Monday. What the fuck? <laughs> Thursday, yeah. This is the, the only Thursday we've got resident regionally. That's going to be a flat out day, man, if I'm working. Huh? Hey? What's that? I said that's going to be a flat out day because I'm working for the old man, Mark. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be crazy. Uh, that's alright, I'll cook dinner. Actually, on that note, you might want to go look through the freezer and find out what you're cooking tonight. There's chicken there. Yeah, you can skive this. Um, I, I like skives. I don't have one. Um, and the sanding method means that I don't remove any material other than the, the surface texture. So uh, I'm, I'm less inclined to use the skive for that anyway. But I don't seem to have contacts for adhesive. I'm going to have to see if I have some inside. Well, you found glue? Did you no, I didn't find glue. <laughs> I had a super glue. When all else fails, super glue wins. I could have said prevails, but it didn't feel like me. 
Because this is only... <laughs> the internet is going to kill me. Alright, um... Yeah, we did actually cover uh, good popular file brains uh, in an episode of uh, the Forgecast. So obviously, you're not watching, you're not listening to the Forgecast, Billy, which I am uh, disappointed in you. I am, I am very disappointed. I thought we were friends. Yeah, absolutely. Shugu and Barge, absolutely great. Uh, I normally use Barge, contact adhesive, but uh, I ran out a while ago. I haven't needed any uh, adhesive. So, um, in this case, we're not actually gluing permanently, so I wouldn't use Barge cement anyway. Children is the one food that dang chew. Now we know something about him. I uh, have used and like, uh, and it's probably easier for me to write. He was just like, as Mick said somewhere else, I think he's not Wi Fi transparent. <laughs> oh, man, seriously. So, it's uh, third. Third files. Did they see that? Yeah. Was it backwards? No, no, you had it the right way. Yeah, cool. Cool. Hopefully. Yeah, so third files are great. Valorb files or Valorb A files are great. Uh, the ones that I currently use that I had donated to me by a very good friend of mine are Barco. Uh, Barco files are fantastic. Um, they are really sharp. They, they keep their edge for a long time. Yeah, they're, they're great. I love them. Use them for reshaping yarn. Um, that delicious. Yeah, yeah. It is, indeed. <clears throat> but uh, Third is, um, is a really good brand. They actually have some of the highest hardness files on record. Normally 68 to 69 Rockwell. Like... That's very hard. <laughs> um, they're ridiculous. I, I, <laughs> uh, if I could get my hands on a set of preferred files, I would. Uh, if I could get my hands on some Valorb files, I would kill for them. But uh, Valorb files are fucking expensive. Third, a good quality for the cost, the same as Bal uh, uh, same as Barco. Valorb are the highest quality files you can get, but they also come with the price tag. It's like buying gems from Tiffany's. <sighs> well, exactly right, yeah. Except Valorb aren't custom made. So, for this little trick, Couple dots of super glue, and I just stick my uh, I'm gonna stick my sheath together roughly. That's just like you can punch it, just to hold it away. Uh, it's actually for sanding. Um, I can punch them separately, um, but when I'm doing the, the profile, um, I want to have it all stuck together so that I can run the sander over it. I know Paul Long, for instance, who is one of the uh, foremost sheath makers in America. Guy makes the most ridiculous sheaths. Uh, he makes sheaths for all of the ABS guys that don't make them, their own sheaths. What? I just had a fucking tick on my head. A tick? Yeah. Well, you, you got its approval. Ha, ha, ha. I don't normally get ticks around here, so... Yeah, that's, that's a first. That's definitely a tick. Yeah. It's a little bushy. Yeah. You do get them, but not normally around here. Yeah, too, not randomly like that. We're like too that. we're too close to the coast for that kind of stuff. 
too close to the coast. All right, so now I just got to clamp this down for a second so that it'll stick. Stick, you bastard, stick. Normally I'd use contact adhesive for this because it's easier to strip apart and it doesn't harden as much as the super glue does. <laughs> Girl from Ipanema, anyone? Ah, no! That one held. Problem is the super glue soaks into the leather so it doesn't doesn't hold very well. Which is good because I don't want it to hold very well. But it means that I have to constantly re-glue it. <laughs> <laughs> I make life hard for myself. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you do. <laughs> <laughs> Life at the moment really doesn't like me. Like, well, no. Life's not made to be easy, man. Come on. No, but you constantly set yourself up as well. Well, yeah, I've got to, you know. Keep yourself guessing. No, that's it. I've got to make it entertaining for myself. No, I'm not sticking my fingers to the sheath, fortunately. I learned that lesson a long time ago. And yeah, super glue is good for, uh, for preventing stitches. If you don't like needles. Doop, doop. Whoa, that was a little too much. The trick is, and it's a trick that I've neglected to do, is to let the first first drop you put on dry and then glue to the second glue the second time yeah yeah Mick Mick spent a lot of time with a knife in his hands so it's a long time you think you would have pulled it out by then <laughs> <laughs> Sam's a fucking comedian. I I I crack me up, man. I crack me up. Okay. Uh, yeah, geek. I'm imagining. I can imagine that would do it. Hey, Lark. Welcome back. You haven't missed much. A carpet needle. That's that's pretty intense. I've, I've fortunately never had to stitch myself up. You have better do it. Uh, my cousin, me, pig hunting, and I got clipped by a ball. Oh, yeah. And they're like, well, you're 13, use a needle and thread, put yourself out. We're pushing on. <laughs> Fair enough. Catch mm. up when you can. This is definitely not my preferred method. It takes too goddamn long. I might actually have to go to the other method. Which is going to make my life even more interesting. What's the other method? So, shape one piece, stitch it all together, and then sand it. Might have to do that because this isn't sticking. Oh, it is. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it is sticking. Maybe we can avert that horrible, horrible way of doing things. <laughs> no. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pulling it apart. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. It's too boring. It's too boring. Yeah, it's just, it's so dry. And um, yeah, in order to get it to stick properly, I'd have to do like multiple layers and it just, yeah, it would just ruin it. Um, as it is, it's not going to hurt it, but... Uh, I don't have the dye anyway, so... Um, yeah, so I'm going to shape... You might shape the rear. Uh, rear portion because it's thicker. Back's not presentation as well. Yeah, back's not too bad. Um, but now I need to go over to the grinder over there. Back for a second. Um, it's car oh, proof over here. Because Nick's ass is getting in the way of the Wi Fi. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. One of the most important factors is that fit up to the guard. Once the guard fits done, straighten out my platen. And that gives me my nice clean profile without the glue on it. It looks a lot cleaner. Why you say thank you to Jared? Why am I saying thank you to Jared? What? What? <laughs> what in the fuck? <laughs> you fucking nutcase. Jared, you're a wonderful person, but some days I worry about your fucking brain. I've got shorts on. Yeah, well, I was digging holes, so... I'll beat you to it, mate. Mate, if I was digging holes, I'd be oh, fucking wearing shorts. Right. He, he reckons we're going to get... Like, Five kilos of coffee! <laughs> what the fuck? 2.2 kilo bag of Beyond, Beyond Black. Black. And then there's, like, another 2.8 kilos of the sword that we get. Uh-huh. Mate. <laughs> I appreciate it, Jared. You're not case, but I appreciate it.
we have our two halves uh, shaped up, ready for stitching. The welt doesn't need to get shaped up at this stage because I can always shape that up after it's all stitched together. The reason I want a, a nice defined edge is because that's where I'm going to run my stitching groover to get the stitching to lay down. And if I don't have a nice defined edge to run my stitching groover over, the stitching groove will wander. And nothing looks worse, to me at least, than a wandering stitching groove. I wish I had an edge bevel, I don't, so I have to make do by running the tip on the board and running the edge along the sheath. It's not the best way to get an edge bevel, but I will bevel it with the grinder later. I'm talking into my apron right now. Probably no one can hear me. Hey, Mike Gonnells, how you doing? <laughs> I start a crack fun me, Ben reckons. <laughs> you crack fun me. Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna, I definitely am going to need that Black Rifle coffee for when I start preparing for Perth Knife Show. No doubt in my mind. Alright. So now I can mark my stitching and get set to uh, stitch this bad boy up. Although I've got a little bit of an overlap here. It's not, it's not ideal. The lesson here is guys, if you're not taking your work seriously, then no one will. Sounds like Mick left his door open. Oh, maybe I left Mick's door open. Whoops. Hmm. Shadow! Bloody dog. Oops, see doodle. I just made a boo boo. That's what happens when you listen to Mick yelling at my dog. <laughs> Well, yeah, Jared, it's it's not exactly like a deep statement. It's not like I'm, I'm the Dalai Lama or anything, but at the end of the day, if you aren't going to take the time and pay the attention that's needed to make the a worthwhile piece, then people are going to recognize that you haven't taken the time, and um, they're not going to appreciate the work. They're not going to value your work. And if you yourself value your work, then why wouldn't you take the time to make it as good as you possibly can? All you have to do is watch Kyle Royer for five minutes and you'll see exactly what valuing your work will get you. I was heartbroken when I watched Kyle Royer's most recent video, which he uploaded this morning. Uh, as well as most of the, the viewer base that I saw co uh, commenting. Because Kyle uh, has recently started a feather pattern Damascus knife build. And uh, at the very end of the video, he announced that he was going to have to start the blade on the Bowie knife over again completely. Something, a fatal flaw had occurred. So, taking things seriously can suck. <laughs> but it's well worth it man. There's a tiny screwdriver. There it is. So this is my stitching groover. This uh the post 
runs along the edge of your piece, follows the edge of your piece, and this little uh, piece with a hole in it, which I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it to focus, focus, camera, focus. There's a little hole in that, and it's a little cutter, and it cuts a groove in the leather. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab my little ruler, wherever it is. Do I have my little ruler? I don't know if I have my little ruler. Did I throw it back in the end? I did. So I know that my welt is 15 millimeters wide. And half of 15 is seven and a half. But I don't want to go that deep because I have removed a little since then. So I'm going to go five millimeters. Set my groove up. And that should be dead center of the welt. Close enough. Better that the stitching is further away from the blade. Um, uh, no, my, my favorite's, uh, my, my favorite is definitely feather. I thought you were trying to do ladder pattern. Ladder pattern's the easiest. No. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it's hard. I mean, for basic patterns, feather is my favorite. Yeah. But then, obviously, there's mosaic patterns and stuff like that, and then you've got, then you've just got so many options. I've seen some mosaics that just blew my mind. And, um, so yeah, mo there's so many mosaics that I would say are my favorite. That's nowhere near halfway, all right. Too far. Too far. I'm always taking things too far. Just like Jared. Jared's always taking things too far. <laughs> we love you though, Jared. Sometimes I think if he could, make it marry. What was that, um, what was that feather variation you showed me the other day? Um, River of Fire? Yeah, River of Fire that Bruce Barnett is famous for. Um... Yeah, I, I really hate raindrop pattern. Gotta be on the right piece. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind it on fittings. But on blades, I hate it. Now is when I wish I had a lot more leather working tools that I actually do. Because if I did, I would ha I would use uh, stop rivets on my stitches, which I don't have. And I'll use an edge beveler, which I don't have. But, what I do have is a stitching groover, and that makes that nice stitching groove. So, 
And because these two are exactly the same shape and size, I can do the same thing to both. And punch them separately. Isn't that wonderful? Now I'm using this more as a guide on this piece. The stitching doesn't really need to sit uh, sit in. I mean, it can. It can be a good thing for it to sit in because uh, then it won't wear away on your pant leg. if you do a lot of wearing, which, you know, hopefully you will. He's planning on killing stuff with it, so... Cheers for what he was asking me. Right. We were talking about the at the time. Yeah. So, got our two halves cut, they've been stitching grooved, now we need to run a stitching wheel over them. And this stitching wheel has a pre-planned or pre-designed stitching width, and as I roll this, it's marking the width. Now, I'm gonna probably use a stitching fork for these anyway, but I like to uh, I like to use the stitching wheel, and this is just a wheel with little posts on it. He's not the only guy, um, Bruce. Oh, and the guy he collaborated with. Eh? Yeah, um, Bruce Bump. I believe. Yeah, there's there's a couple of other people who've attempted it, but none of them quite get the same result as Bruce Barnett does. And I know Bruce teaches Damascus making classes, but I know that that's not one that he's willing to teach. Well, no, it's up to his main. <laughs> Just watching, Daniel. It's kind of the idea, isn't it? Now, the only issue is that my stitching fork's probably not going to match these holes, and if it doesn't, I might end up individually punching these. Yay! <laughs> Much as I love to, yeah. Freaking awesome. If I do have to do that, I'm going to use my 1.5mm drill bit in my drill press, because I am lazy! There's a trick for you, kids. If you don't want to spend ages punching holes, use a drill press. It's called cheating. Alex from Valhalla Ironworks was a fantastic friend and sent me this uh, set of leather punches. Diamond leather punch. I think I'm right. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Wrong way off. I don't think a tight pattern like that will look really good on this sheath, so... I'm going to go with the drill press idea. Now the trick is you always drill from the outside in. If you drill from the inside out, it looks horrifying. Um, 
Yeah, you get really nasty stuff. Oh, Andy. Oh, Andy. <laughs> Please don't tell me. Mate, I'm not that fucking organized. So that it does have a position and a natural position that way it's always in the same spot. <laughs> yeah. Because like even though Andy all the stuff and does a wonderful job of cleaning up and tidying, it's never in the same place twice. No. It's no. <laughs> well that that could be really, really awkward because I don't have my chuck key. And I don't know where Andy put the chuck key. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Andy, how I love you, but some days. Chuck Key stays with the drill. That's one thing I probably didn't need organized. <laughs> just, just, just saying. Ah, oh, there it is. I knew it would be somewhere. Andy's not one to throw things away. You monitoring my comments on me? Yeah. So, 1.5 millimeter pivot. I know that Nick Wheeler uh, actually doesn't use a drill bit at all. He uses a... Uh, he uses a needle. And a drill. Yep. He uses a, a homemade one and a half millimeter mirror polished needle yeah. in the drill bit. And what that does is polish the hole as it goes through. Burnish it. Yeah, yeah, it would. I, I've i tried that method. I don't like it because uh, I don't think... I don't think I'm getting the setup right, and all that mine does is kind of burn things. And that's not really useful for a person who's trying not to burn things. Like, I like burning things, don't get me wrong. But there are times and places for burning things. I never have, like, just scraps of wood. I've got lots of wood, but all of it's, like, useful. Or odd shapes. You want a scrap? Oh, it is a flat piece of pine, probably. Uh, just to drill through. It's always important to have a backing for your leather. Flat. flat. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> you're trying to hand me an aircraft propeller. Um, you know. Yeah. Oh. Lord. It's a shame it's a piece of jar, but it'll work. Yeah. Sometimes sacrifices must be made. Oh yeah, that's a that's a nice rough piece. Right, cut the end off it with a saw. And watch me saw on my handle. Do I advise doing this at home? Nah. <laughs> it's so slippery. <laughs> appearing on my wonderful show of me fucking everything. <laughs> Welcome to How Can Sam Screw Up Today? Yay! File the surface clean. Yeah, I know, but I don't have room for a five minute sawhorse.
Yeah, I know they make carpet needles. I have carpet needles. Uh, it would help if I plugged the drill in. Oh man, I'm doing really well today. If only I knew where to get one. Ah. The guys in the chat will get that one. I know this is riveting viewing content, watching me just drill multiple holes in a piece of leather. The reality of craftsmanship is very rarely this, uh, this boring. trying to move quickly whilst being accurate because this is a customer order. I don't really want to stuff it up purely because I'm doing it on a live stream, so I have to apologize guys, but this is going to be, uh, yeah, this is going to be how it goes. Mick can keep you entertained in the comments if he's still there. size from 10 mil.
The what? Then you probably got a very, very poorly engineered 3 8 socket. A very loose 3 8 socket. I mean, there's only 0.4 of a mil in it, so. Well, yeah, one eighth, one eighth is 3.2 mil. So three eighths is 9.6. And I actually think it's 3.23 or something like that. So it's actually like 9.69, 9.7 mil. So you've only got 0.3 of a mil. So unless you've got super tight tolerances in sockets, you might make it. And in some cases, you might find that a 3 8 head fits a 10 mil head, the 3 8 socket fills a 10 mil head better than a 10 mil socket does. If you've got a poorly engineered set. Because realistically, a 10 mil head should fit a 10 mil almost seamlessly. Because the less slop you have, the less likely you are to strip the head. And that's the same with the three heads. eights hole and tried to drive a 10 mil rivet through it, you'd never get it. Oh, um, Newt's uh, leather work. Oh, hey Randy. I was just talking about you. None of it was good, I promise. So that's one stage of the sheath drilled. <laughs> you weren't particularly needed, Newt. I was just... Uh... <laughs> Cheers, Lalk. <laughs> Randy, avert your eyes. Yeah, indeed. Avert your eyes. I have drilled holes in leather. How horrible is that? Yeah, man. That's mainly because I don't have a fork punch that punches uh, spaced holes that far apart. Um, if I had a punch which could match my uh, stitching marker, then I would. But I don't, so I won't. And there. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> Screw you, Jared. You can't make me look twice. <laughs> No, I bloody didn't. That's why I stitching grooved them. I can't. <laughs> you prick. <laughs> Oi. Honestly. Call you guys my friends. <clears throat> right, so I've got one side done. I'm going to do the other one. More captivating content from Sam Towns. You what?
What? Successfully done. Now I'm going to continue doing the bad thing. Randy, if I could afford all the leatherworking tools that I needed to make my job easier, I would have all the blacksmithing tools I need to make my job easier first. And as much as punching each one of these holes individually with a single fork punch sounds like a fantastic time, I am neither that thrilled about that idea, nor do I have the bloody time. As it is, punching these holes individually with a drill takes as much time as I'm willing to take. argue that I should, but the real question is, will I? And the answer is, bloody hell no. If it makes you feel any better, my wife absolutely hates the fact that I drill leather. You'll be shocked and horrid, Randy, to find out that I don't even have stop rivets to put on my stitches. So this is going to be an unstop riveted, drilled stitch. It's like the ultimate leather, leather worker's blasphemy. This sheath would look pretty good with a stop rivet on both ends of the stitch. But we don't have it, so we're not using it. But I still haven't stamped this leather yet, so... leather dye, so I'm not going to be able to finish the sheet today anyway. What's that? Yeah, yeah, you were, but never mind. Originally we were going to use leather dye on the uh, antler for your uh, straight razor. 
but uh, that kind of didn't happen. It looks all right without it, to be honest. Yeah, I know. I know. I know why you use a punch. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, the, the the stitching forks or stitching punches, as they are, um, push the material out of the way. Whereas the the uh, the drill actually removes material. Realistically, unless you're making saddlery, um, it doesn't make a huge difference. Um, there's not going to be enough tension or torsion on these pieces in order to tear the material uh, apart. Especially because I'm using uh, rather thick veg tan leather. Um, it's more important when you're using upholstery uh, or making shoes where there's a lot of kind of flex and movement uh, in the material all the time and also in saddles, um, you know, if you're, if you're making a saddle because that, that hole is the weakest point in the material and it's got a, basically what amounts to a shear blade running through it, you know, that, that string is just a, a piece of string, you can pull string through cheese you can pull it through leather um, so the important thing is that um, for sheath making, especially sheath making, there's no tension on the material. It's simply to hold the pieces together, which means that there's literally no tension on it. What do you the same what you did to that bench. Um, nailed one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just clinched them over. <laughs> I, we're making another one. Don't worry about it. I'm going to buy screws and we're going to make it properly. Make a nice one, make it a little bit bigger. Mm, mm, bit, bit bigger, a bit flatter. Yeah. And I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna have a wider uh, stop piece in there, yeah. which means we're gonna have four screws in it. Like a nice, uh, like, like box section on the end. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be work. Nice little portable tool bench. Yeah, because the thing is that my my work table is wood, but it's covered in crap. It's got nothing but metal filings and stuff in it. And I wanted a lifted bench that I could work at, where I don't have to bend over to get to the work. So what we did was, um, <laughs> as you guys saw, nailed a piece of wood to the back of this... Uh, um, nailed the wood to the back of this um, cutting board, which I had lying around. And um, it made a, work a workable bench. It was pretty good. Uh, probably like that about that, Randy. This um, so the the front the front pad is a two mil thick leather, I believe. Um, I don't have my vernier calipers. I don't know where I put my vernier calipers down, but they are missing as of now. But uh, Let's have a look at the. So it's about it's about three thirty seconds of an inch thick. That stuff. Then the backing, the uh, the base plate, is uh, five thirty seconds. One, two, three, four thirty seconds. What's that? An eighth. Or is that? Yeah, that's, that's an eighth. It's an eighth. Pretty sure it's an eighth. Yeah, it's an eighth. So that's an eighth of an inch thick, and the other stuff is uh, like a sixteenth less. Sorry, I don't measure things in yee to fucking 
Yes, yeehaw per Freedom Eagle. Um, that's how we measure things in the good old US of A. Right, so, got my two panels. One eight is eight and a half ounce. Okay. Yeah, that might work. <clears throat> Would you mind grabbing me another Pepsi mm -hmm. out of the fridge? Grab yourself one if you want. Um, now, I'm kind of running into a problem. Not really a problem. Um, not a problem for me, at least. Um, the issue is, is that I can't dye this today because I don't have any dye. Um, I think you killed it enough. What? <laughs> well, yeah, I killed it. For sure, I, I completely destroyed it, but I can't uh, add pigment to this piece of leather until I buy said pigment. And I also want to buy some contact adhesive so that I can actually stick it together. Um, so that I can do the final round of punching, which is going to be through the welt. But that's how I prepare my sheaths for stitch up. And if you guys are interested, Depending on how many of you are going to hang around, I might start on another one. No, Jared, I'm not going to use that. Bark. Um, a dog? Bark? I know I've got shoe polish. I'm not using shoe polish to fucking... I'm not using shoe polish to dye this stuff. And I, I'm going to have to wet it anyway. Uh, no, tree, for, as far as tree bark goes, we have bugger all in ways of useful tree bark. <laughs> um, I would love to have access to something like birch bark, but birch bark would be freaking amazing. But unfortunately, birch doesn't grow in Australia. It dies every time we bring it here because it is weak as piss. Right, need more paper. Knock those clinch nails down a bit more. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching Mick die inside. <laughs> well, that's great. Okay, so. The what? No. You didn't say please. So, you guys interested in hanging around for another sheath or. 45 minutes. Anything that's moist and will hold water. But yeah, we're pretty much bugger all for that, Randy, unfortunately. Welcome to Australia, where all of our frickin' bark falls apart the moment you pull it off the tree. Three days of spring. 37 degrees, thanks. Oh, is it 37 degrees? It feels bloody hot. I'm sweating my bollocks off of here. Okay, so we're going to make another sheath. This is one of the knives that will be on my Etsy store. See ya, Belly. Um, this is one of the knives that will be on my Etsy store in the near future. This is a wrought iron and file steel forge welded... 22, fuck off. It's not 22. Anyway. Um, this one is a Japanese and Scandinavian fusion style sax, and what I want to make is a Scandinavian style pocket um, sheath. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And Scandinavian style pocket sheath requires one piece of leather folded on itself with a single welt, and it will normally come to about there on the knife. 
roughly. Yeah, what's it feel like? So I imagine the feel like temperature is a bit freaking higher. Yeah, what's the humidity? There's, there's a question. Yeah, I imagine the humidity is quite high. Uh, 26.5 degrees, humidity is like 2%. Bugger off. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Don't hit it. But, but, no. No, no, I was a game. I'm not, <laughs> but, but that's not how it works. Damn it. You're accident prone. It's not an in the pocket sheath. Walnut husks, that would be interesting. That's an empty one. There you go, Andy. Right, so to make a pocket chief, similar thing, I need a welt. The welt needs to come out a certain distance. I normally go for about a 15 mil welt. The welt is the stitching protector. So on a big Bowie knife sheath like this, you have the two outer layers and then you have the bit that runs down the middle, which the stitching goes through. Because if that's the welt, the, the strip of leather, yeah. This this bit. Because that, uh, otherwise, if you just kind of had two panels of leather and stitched them together, then when you stuck the knife in there, you'd run the knife over all the stitching. It's still possible, if you don't do a good, the correct job, that the knife can get between the welt and the pieces and slice the, the thing, but that just requires that you glue properly and stitch properly. That's why I glue and stitch my welts, because gluing helps prevent the knife from slipping between the welt and the stitching. Uh, between the welt and the panels. Nope. That's cool. Bison brown. I like it. So yeah, I normally go for about a 15 mil welt. Exactly the same process as the last one. The only difference is, is that this doesn't have a welt on the other side. I, I, I was doing what I normally do, which is draw a welt all the way around, but that doesn't occur in this case, because the welt's only on one side. Okay, so, so delicious. I'm going to keep saying that, screw it. Okay, where's the blade finish? That's the question. At the pointy end? Well, no. It, it, it actually, no, it, quite the opposite. No, no. At the flat end where it meets the guard. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> you fail. I don't fight this <laughs> See you, Jared. I am doing a taco sheath. <clears throat> it is uh, actually historically correct for a sack to be in a taco. Kind of. Kind of taco. Let me guess. Fold it over. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it's like my uh, hunting knife sheath, which you've ever, if you've ever seen that one. Yeah, the, the white fitted one. Yeah. I really like taco sheaths um, for certain knives. But, you know. Everyone's got personal opinions on the matter. Like I imagine Randy has his personal feelings on the matter. Yeah, he's like, please tell me you're not doing the Yeah, I, I saw that. that was, that's why I was making comment on it. Uh, might, might go at an angle like that. That's, that's a nice angle. I like that angle. That's a nice angle. 
I like that angle. Anyone get that reference? Probably not. It's been a while. There, that'll give me enough space. Yep. Alright, well, that will work. Now I need to make fucking center line. I don't know why I become British when I get annoyed. It's probably my dad's fault. <laughs> the, more, the more irritated my dad gets, the more British he becomes. Oh, I'm laughing because I can absolutely see. Me and my dad are way more similar than I like to admit. Yeah. <laughs> and having worked with him, you can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was just laughing. Draw a silly. Oops. Why do I always run over my finger when I do that? Maybe because I'm not paying attention. Anyway. Yeah, Shrek reference. <laughs> Better than that. Why why am I better than that? What's wrong with taco sheets? I like taco sheets. What's wrong with taco sheets? <sighs> I don't get it. Taco sheets are awesome. Why all the taco sheath height? Now, if I'm smart, I'll move that out. <laughs> what? If I'm smart. If I'm smart, yeah, well, you know, you gotta make these, you gotta make these comments. If I'm smart, but I'm not. Um, now, I want a 15mm welt, but if I use a 15mm welt, I'm not gonna have room for my blade. Technically, that should look somewhat more. Like that. Yeah. That's Cat says hi. Hey cat! I got Mick reading the comments for me, so if I miss any, it's his fault. Mm -hmm. I'm glad Rich got my Shrek reference. That's why he's my patron. It's because he's awesome. My patrons are all awesome. Alright, so... Taco sheath time. Um, let's annoy Randy time. Anyway. Ah. Uh, why you rip on me? Ah! I need to sharpen this again. Mick, why didn't you sharpen my knife for me? You're a failure as a friend. <laughs> oh, That's it. Wow. <laughs> Can I get an F in the chat for mine and mixed friendship? He doesn't, he doesn't remind me to sharpen my work knives. I can slap him on straight on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's got, it's got some pretty nasty nicks in it, this one. I'll let him, I'll still let him live here. Maybe. 
Punch your own hammer eyes. Huh? Punch your own hammer eyes. Well, well, you know. You gotta make my wife happy first, man. You gotta do the dishes. I'll give her the money. This is true. She's happy. <laughs> Yeah, she had. She actually pointed out to me the other day that you actually provide more to the family monetarily wise than I do. It was a hard moment. I was like, right, he doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about you doing dinners for like when I'm doing baseball training. Yeah. He's like, Mick's not a slave, and I'm like, yeah, but he fucking lives here. So like, yeah, but he contributes more money to the house than you do. Like, oh. It's harsh. I'm trying, damn it. I'm working my butt off. My best is not good enough. Welcome to being married. Oh, man. <laughs> that is not going to be big enough. Like, I'm That's boring. what she said. <laughs> that is what she said, indeed. <laughs> it's Mick's fault. Make her own the chicken. Miss, miss. Make her own the chicken. It's still good, it's still good. Yeah, it's just a little airborne. It's still good, it's still good. <laughs> That nothing but now. Man, I'm, I'm all about the movie references today. I used to know the, the, the full Swahili version a while ago. <clears throat> what happened to the money you gave, us, gave me? What money did you give me? You talking about uh, yeah, money? Yeah, money. Unfortunately, doesn't last long around here. Most of my YouTube ad revenue goes to YouTube. Because they are. Greedy little bastards. Anyway, um, as far as my Patreon donations, they were supposed to go to a Rode lav mic, but unfortunately, life decided to throw a hole in my way and smash my phone. So, again. yeah, again. So all of that, uh, all of that wonderful Patreon money that I was going to put on a Rode that lav mic currently is feeding me. So you know. We can't win them all. Cat, what, uh, this is your best four episodes. Oh, I saw that. Thank you very much, Cat. I hope you enjoy the show. We greatly enjoy bringing it to you, so we hope you enjoy. Seven.
I'll happily challenge you to a singing contest, Randy. I think I'll win. <laughs> Aussie and Swedish. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're no longer the only Aussie smithing podcast. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, the guys from Gamico, Corin and the boys, and uh, Kev's Forge and Mert Tansu. It's not smithing in general, it's knife making. Um, but they have the Australian Knife Making uh, Podcast. Let me guess, it started off a few weeks after yours. Uh, it started off a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. So, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. And, and Corin, Corin was the one who uh, organized our sponsorship, so it wasn't like he wasn't aware of our podcast. <laughs> Uh, we're not direct competition though, because we speak about a lot more than just knife making. They're basically trying to uh, model themselves on uh, Knife Talk, the American podcast for knife makers. It's not a bad show, actually. I like it. And Mert, Mert and Kev are great guys. Corin's a good dude. Um, so, yeah. If you're into knife making and want to hear more Australians blather on about crap, uh, you check out the Australian Knife Makers podcast, but yeah, Forgecast is way better. So you should listen to that. Yes, I agree. Hey, Logan. Bit too bitter for my tastes, I found, Daniel. Swedes. Please tell me someone gets that. I'm going to feel really bad if everyone thinks that I hate Swedish people. Yeah. These days you never know. People take things personally. Nils is hysterically something. <laughs> Nils is hysterical. <laughs> I kid. I love Mills. My fellow Forgecast host. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, shame on you. What are you doing? But uh, Alex Norton from Valhalla Ironworks. I completely forgot his last name for a second. Sorry, Alex. Um, Neil Zerglin and myself run a podcast called The Forgecast where we talk about all kinds of forging stuff. Funnily enough. <clears throat> and we have a great laugh doing it. And we thoroughly enjoy bringing people along for the ride, you idiot. No, no, I'm right. It's good. Woo! Shit, I was uh, worried there for a minute. Yeah, no, I'm good. We're good. No, I'm good, Randy, because I'm going to go straight to leather. The thing is, is that I never make the same knife twice, so there's no point in me making a template. What about that other guy? That, the other guy is really good, too. Isn't he? Funny and interesting, maybe? I don't know. Maybe he's really boring and no one likes him. Now I'm sad. Comment. Huh? Comment. Uh, <laughs> debatable. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> debatable. That's it. You're definitely buying a Team Sam t-shirt when we finally get the fucking Forgecast t-shirts running. And that's, that, uh, by the way, that, um, <laughs> that is happening. We are, uh, we are getting Forgecast merch. 
I also will be having merch of my own very soon. I'm going to be starting a Redbubble store. For those of you who are interested in getting a Sam Towns Bladesmith t-shirt. Uh, and perhaps other forms of merch, I'm not sure. I, I'm actually really interested. We've got a friend who does embroidery, yeah. and I don't wear t-shirts. I wear polos. Like, that's all I wear. Anyone who's followed my channel will know that all I wear is polos. I, like, I wear t-shirts, but I'd rather a polo or a short-sleeved button. So, I'm, I'm vying to buy a whole bunch of... Um, a whole bunch of polo shirts and embroider them with my logo. So... Stay tuned for that, because I'm hoping I can make that a reality. That's the dream. I know Rob from uh, Grandad's Forge was asking me a while ago whether I had any merch. And so Rob, if you ever watch this in review, it's happening buddy. But yeah, the Forgecast will also be getting shirts. We'll be having a standard uh, Forgecast t-shirt for those of you who just want to support the Forgecast. But then we'll also have Team Sam, Team Nils, and Team Alex shirts. Because we all want to know who's the best, and I already know. So I, I don't have to worry. Well, seeing as Alex is already selling his on his on his shop, which I find highly unfair, because there's no Team Sam fucking shirt right now, but there is a Team Alex shirt. This is wrong. So if he beats me in sales, it's only because he cheated and started without us. <laughs> Hear that, Alex? You can end up in a skirt. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Depends on a, uh, a speedo. A speedo. <laughs> a thong, yeah. Well, I can get you a set of thongs. The proper Australian way. Yeah, get him a set of double thongs. You gotta have your double pluggers in order to be an Aussie, right? Unfortunately, they don't make them in my fucking size. There is one reason I don't have a set of double pluggers, and it's because they don't make them in my size. Sad as that is, I've lost my Aussie card. Unfortunately, kept my V card in the process. <laughs> <laughs> the horror on his face. Wow, Team Sam on a speedo. I'm I'm honoured. That'd be Sam on a speedo. I'm too big to be on a speedo though. <laughs> I'm way too big to be in a speedo. Fuck yeah. There's no way I'm getting in a speedo. <laughs> Ben's obviously drinking. Because he's don't drinking. Ben's don't drinking tonight. I am not live streaming in a mantini. You can live stream in a mantini. If we get if we get to fifty likes on this live stream, no. I will get Mick no. to wear a mantini on my live stream. <laughs> that is a promise. I will be checking the likes in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll do it too. <laughs> That's why Mick's so worried. It's because he knows he will do it. Yeah. Uh, actually, that might be interesting. 
interesting. That could work. Wonder if that'll work. This is either really, really smart, like big brain, but or really, really stupid. <laughs> The barefoot blacksmith in a panty. <laughs> That's the one. Get you swinging the swinging the sledgehammer in the panty. <laughs> oh, be fun. I'm looking forward to this already. Huh? Actually, we're at 22. Oh, God. It's not updating that fast. <laughs> yeah, this isn't this isn't the neatest way to do this, but it's working. And yes, Randy, I know I should be using a Skive or something, or a, or a V-Tool. If I had one, I would. This is actually working quite well. I'm, I'm actually impressed with how well that works. Obviously not the best method, but that's that's actually not bad. Center, so it folds a bit easier. <laughs> Nick is sweating quite badly right now because he's worried. He's worried you're going to make him forge in Nanking. You want to do some forge welding? Oh. <laughs> Big billet going, eh? <laughs> A coping saw. Coping saw, really? What, like sawing down this way? I wouldn't want to saw it in half. It's interesting. Coping saw? I can't think of how that even work. Oh, like, yeah, like, skiving this way. Eh, yeah. oh, that could work, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a coping, well, I do have a coping saw, that's not true. I do have a coping saw. But it's too late now. Already done. <laughs> and I'm too lazy to start again, so, fuck her off. Anyway, um... Yeah, so, true up the sides. Get them all nice and neat. Hmm? Neat-ish. Neat-ish, yes. Neat-ish indeed. Just need the edge to be at least smooth-ish. So that I can do my stitching mark. I might go with that side. That's going to be the outside anyway, so... I'll do that!
<laughs> no one's going to be butting heads with a man in a mankini. There was actually a really good video of that on YouTube. Of a guy who went around, like, trying to start fights, but then when the other person got aggressive, he just stripped down to a mankini and run after them. Mm. It was hilarious. Alright, so... Stitching! Groove... No, I don't. I need to make a, uh, a welt. Mmm, tasty. Alright. Don't think that is going to work. This might work. That will. That will work. That will work. Indeed. Right. That was a bad cut. You know what would be handy right now, Randy says? A leather knife. You know what would be handy, Randy? The money to pay for a fucking leather knife. I just find it funny that people underestimate how fucking poor I am. <laughs> It'd be funny if it wasn't so sad. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> No, thank you. Uh, I just think you named like the list of things I never want to see in my life. Whoo! Now the question is, does the blade fit in? the welt in place? The answer is yes. Just. Cool. That suits me just fine. Huh. 
All right. Hurrah. Don't think I'm going to tool this one. I don't think I'm going to tool, tool this sheath. I don't think I need to. But what I do need to do... Yeah, I will. Yeah, that's, that's part of the plan. I just want to make sure that I have enough room to wet fit it because if it's if it's way too th like if it's way too tight, then it's not going to fit a no matter what I do. So yeah, but I think with that being said, I am super hot in here right now, and uh, we've been going for like three hours now or something like that. Um, yeah, about three three hours. Yeah. Cool, so uh, I think that's going to call an end to this live stream. I appreciate you guys hanging around for as long as you did. I'm going to go s have some lunch and uh, <laughs> and get out of the heat for a bit. Um, so, hopefully... Yeah, it probably would, but I've... Yeah, I mean, it, I've got a lot of holes in my apron. <laughs> i got a lot of holes in my shirt, I should say. It looks ugly as hell. Um... But anyway, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Um, I've got two sheaths to finish. Um, one of them will be on a blade that will be going on my Etsy store. This one, with the Cypress Heart handle, uh, will be up on my Etsy store in its taco sheath. Randy probably won't buy it, but <laughs> someone will, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but yeah, so I've got a lot more work to do in the coming weeks. Uh, I'm planning on doing a whole bunch of live streams uh, instead of videos in the near future, I might go back to making vlog style content for a while. Uh, and I'm going to try and keep doing uh, intermediary um, big videos as well. Um, the, the main reason for this is because I've got the Perth Knife Show to prepare for. I'm also drastically uh, broke and need to focus on getting some stock out the door. I've got a whole bunch of hammers I want to make. Um, so Mick and I are going to be working our butts off. We've also got the hydraulic press to build. Um, which we'll be building in the next week or so, hopefully, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, I greatly appreciate my patron support, but I also appreciate everyone else who comes to watch these live streams, to check out in the chat, uh, to hang out with me and, and say hi, and everyone who comments on my videos. So, with that being said, guys, I hope you have a fantastic week. I will see you on Saturday for another live stream. I'm thinking about doing a deep dive video on Friday. I will figure out whether or not that's viable. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for more content. I am definitely going to have more coming out soon. More live streams, more videos, more deep dives, all kinds of fun stuff. Thank you very much for hanging with me <laughs> and being patient. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.